Hello, Tandy Lab fans. It's Jacob, and I've got something pretty nice today. Uh, we're looking at a dot matrix printer uh, from 1988. This is the uh, DMP 130 printer, uh, model number 26 1280. Exciting stuff. And uh, we've got this box, which. Uh, Interestingly enough, uh, the person we bought this from shipped it in its original box. I want to do that, but you'll see more of that once we get into it. Uh, let's go. So, the first thing you're going to notice is this big old shipping label here. That's us. Uh, they just taped it onto the box. There's no way we are ever removing it, which is kind of a disappointment. General rule of thumb, guys. If you're going to ship something old, I don't really care what it is, whether it's a printer, whether it's knickknacks, something like that. Don't ship them in their original box. Spend the nickel on an outer box. Uh, so, there are some interesting things on this box besides the big glaring shipping label. Uh, we have the original serial number of the device printed here. Don't know if you're going to be able to make that out because it's pretty faded, but it says it is model zero, uh, number zero two zero seven four five three interesting i think the coolest thing on this box however is on the opposite side we have a radio shack shipping label uh, where this product was sent on order to a specific radio shack this one it took us a little while to uh, figure it out because the handwriting was a little hard to read uh is in was in Definitely not around anymore. Was in Golden Valley, Minnesota. So if anyone's uh, from that area, you should uh, let us know what happened to your Radio Shack. <laughs> um, that's pretty interesting. There's nothing else really fancy on the top of the box. Um, the sides are actually pretty boring as well. Very plain Jane, nothing fancy. Uh, there is some writing on this side. A number, you can see it right over here. Neat, I guess. I'm not sure what that's about. And then we have the inside. The box is pretty beat up. Not sure how much of that is from, you know, general wear and tear over the years, and how much of it is from this box being shipped through UPS. And uh, UPS are not usually that gentle with your. Uh, packages, especially if you get a particularly disgruntled UPS employee. Uh, all right, so first impression from opening this box is the smell. I know you guys can't smell it. YouTube hasn't invented smell-o-vision yet, um, but it is musty. It smells like an old cat lady's basement. That's a good smell, guys. Tells you that what you're opening is uh, old school. So first we have the little tray. It's just plastic, nothing else. It's cheap, but nice to have. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get this out for you guys. Uh, you can see here, cables just kind of thrown in it. I believe it's attached, so I'm not going to be able to separate that. Uh, it does have its dust cover, which is nice. Um, how am I going to get this out? I guess I'm going to have to lift the entire thing up like so. Oh, the box smells even stronger now. <coughs> uh, I had another piece of cardboard in it. All right. Okay. So, let's take these side pieces off and not drop it like that, preferably. Uh, as, as I continue to uh, excavate this printer, I get more and more of a basement. Uh, Dust cover, actually pretty nice to have. I mean, you don't have to use it specifically for this printer. You can use it for some of your others or whatever. But they're nice. 
Minus the fact that this one's kind of grungy and dirty. Uh, and the printer is covered in dust. Oh, I'm going to have to wash my hands after this. Um, I'm not sure what this is. There's a random, like, snip of paper that's been ripped apart that was thrown in here. No idea what it is. But, uh, here's the actual printer. See, Tandy badge over here. And see actual controls on the front here. They're those, like, mushy kind of calculator pad style buttons. Um, top comes off like so. And here we have the actual printer itself, uh, the mechanism underneath. I apologize, I'm not super familiar with these, so I can't tell you uh, what we're looking at as far as condition. But it appears that everything would function. I think I can tentatively say that. Uh, let's take a look at the sides. So you can spin around, hooray. Uh, we have the power switch. We have the... Hmm. Interesting. You have your uh, printer connector right here, as well as the uh, other connector. I guess the TRS-80 style, I'd, I'd uh, hazard a guess. We've got what appear to be the most dip switches I've ever seen on a printer. And, oops, that'll have to be uh, <laughs> quieted down so you guys don't go deaf from hearing that. Uh, the cable, that's it. It's pretty simple, honestly. Here you go. I'll give you one last pretty shot of the printer to look at. And uh, I'm gonna end this video here by Thanking you so much for watching this video. If you like Tandy stuff, uh, like this video. If you don't like Tandy stuff and you're just on one of those weird YouTube binges that somehow ends up with you watching some random guy open printers, like this video anyways. Uh, subscribe. Let me know down below if you've ever used one of these things. I have never used one. I don't think I've ever used a dot matrix printer of any type sure. Uh, make sure if you're a big fan of retro electronics and computers that you join our Facebook group, Tandy Lab Fans. We've got tons of cool stuff there. People share their collections of old computer games and stuff like that. It's a ton of fun. So uh, that's all I have for you guys today. So see you guys next time.